Welcome to Bullion Bulletin. This is uh, the day that we are we have gathered here. It is the first day of Asia Pacific Precious Metals Conference held in Singapore. We have with me very special guest. He is the guest of honor to the for today's program and he is the assistant CEO of IE Singapore, Mr. Sadbinder Singh. Welcome, sir. Welcome to Bullion Thank Bulletin. You. Thank you for having me. My having. first question, as you have, uh, as you uh, made some numbers in your speech, uh, it is really encouraging that uh, since the lift of the GST on the uh, investment grade gold in Singapore, trade has been increased. I think you have mentioned 188 percent, nearly 200 percent. Yes. We wanted to know something more about this investment grade gold. What does it stand for in Singapore, and what does it uh, stand for the region's trade? Sure. So I must say that um, Singapore is a as a hub. Um, it's not just for precious metal. We are the biggest uh, commodities hub for energy, for agri products, for even the metal mining sector. So to some extent, we were naturally stifling our ability to support the entire precious uh, metal market in our part of the world because of the GST. So with the removal of GST in 2012, it was only natural that what rightfully should happen in an eco market place like Singapore has started to happen. Mm -hmm. so, so to some extent, before the GST was a very, un I, I call it an unnatural stifling, mm -hmm. you know, but obviously um, very, very few hubs in the world have tax on investable gold. So we were the very few centers in the world that had. So once we have removed the abnormally, I think we, you can naturally see the results that the flows have begun to come to the market. The bullion banks here are actively trading. Mm -hmm. um, gold trading companies are actively setting up their bases here. The regional players that are wanting to do business with one another are beginning to find the marketplace relevant. So, uh, is this the impact of this uh, very factor that now we are seeing in Singapore? A lot of companies are coming with uh, investment get product in form of a digital way. Some companies have introduced already, they are using the blockchain technology also. So, yes. is this the impact of the uh, lift up GST in 2002? No, I, I would say that is physical flows, the mm -hmm. impact of GST. But what you are talking about is, I will call it the innovation, the disruption that's coming along with it. And definitely, when you're looking around the region, we are one of those places in the region where we welcome disruption. And it's not about technology. When you talk about disruption, technology is just one part of it. And technology is available anywhere in the world. I think what most private sector is looking for is the legislative changes that will also accommodate the transformation of business rules. And I think this is where they are finding Singapore as being a very uh, strong, dedicated hub, where the government has been re really been very forthcoming. Just to give an example, the Monetary Authority of Singapore, um, they actually is very aggressively pushing in fintech. Yeah. Whether it's blockchain, whether it's new fresh payment terms, uh, they all are pushing those initiatives and they are telling the industry, please come, disrupt, please experiment, right? Do not worry too much about legislation because we're going to come and help legislate to support it. Now, there are very few locations in the world where industry feels comfort like this, yeah. you know? I'm not saying we are the earliest in the journey right. of uh, disruption, right. but I think we have the ingredients that private sector is looking for now. You know, it, the technology coming with legislative change in order to support those innovation that you're going to see. And I, Singapore, actually, I feel that's provided a tremendous uh, support to this industry, entire the commodity value chain. And a uh, lot of uh, in the Singapore, uh, yeah, in the airport, we have, you know, I think there is a brings wall for storing of precious metals and this kind of infrastructure Singapore has given. Now, sir, you are talking about some, the concept of economic hub in your yes. speech. Yes. So, how, just briefly for my audience, sure. how would Singapore, this IE Singapore's, uh, you know, uh, IE Singapore's, uh, contribution to making this hub for the industry. Sure. So I would say uh, we play a supporting role but uh, when you look at any commodity class and be it precious metals you're really looking at four things. Four things coming together and then I would say you qualify as a hub. Number one I would say you want to come to a place where it's neutral 
where you have so many counterparties together. And I think this is where Singapore, um, we are open to everyone, right? Um, so it's a place where you're beginning to see many, many counterparties sitting here doing business. Um, we are also a place, number two, the most important thing is really we are a large financial center. Right. So for a hub to operate, you need liquidity, the US dollar liquidity. And then you also need, you also need what I call ability to manage the various currency exposures. Right. Okay. Again, this is a place in Singapore. We are the third largest Forex hub in the world. Right. And the variety of currencies that you see today traded here, the highest liquidity you'll get here. So the Indian rupee, the Indonesian rupiah, right, renminbi, the Japanese yen, they all are actively traded in the market. So the financial part is important. The counterparties are important. I think the third most important is really the legal, the neutrality, contracts. Now, when you want to do business with counterparties, you want a jurisdiction where you know if there is, there is a disruption or if there's a dispute, you are able to deal with it efficiently. Right. I think this is where our mediation, our arbitration, and the contracts, Sing people are finding it a lot easier to do business here in Singapore. You know, it's no longer just about London contracts, UK uh, or the US contracts. It's about using Singapore as a jurisdiction where a Chinese company can sit and do business with an Indian company, an Indonesian company can sit and do business with a Chinese company, right? And they have options of using Singapore contracts, Singapore mediation, Singapore arbitration. So that's the third ingredient. And lastly, I will say in our business, it's really about people and you really need good people and effective people in order to do business and i think in that way we invest a lot in our people and unlike uh, other hubs in the world when companies come here and they set up a lot of the middle office a lot of the front office is occupied by our own people so that reduces costs you know? so to me when you put all these factors together i mean i call it it provides the trust that business need, especially our business, right? Precious right. money. For my last question, so especially in the gold sector, so I feel that Singapore is a perfect location to bridge the markets. Asian is the, the money is really, I mean, the AAA rating economy. So for the gold value chain, what is your idea? You are talking about uh, that uh, growth of Chinese economy, Indian economy. So be keeping in our eyes on 2030 yep. where can Singapore as a gold trading hub can we imagine a gold trading hub that we have seen in some of the European uh, locations can we imagine that kind of setup in next time to the years? so um, is this I, the possibility I would say that we we are very bullish I mean um, while you read the newspapers and there's a lot of depressing news yeah. because most of the news comes from the West right. but sitting in Asia and, and you're talking to somebody from India, somebody from China, somebody from Indonesia. Our worldview is slightly different. And when you look at demographics, demographics is on our side. Now, the biggest growth of economies, the largest growth of companies, the highest rises in productivity in the next 10, 15 years, we are beginning to going to be see them right here around our backyard. I'm just giving you an example. The Pricewaterhouse has uh, done a study and they size up economies and they look at the US today which has 17 trillion and they were looking at China and China is going to be an economy in 20, uh, 2030 okay. almost double the size of what US is today right. at 39 trillion dollars you know? and then India incredibly is going to be larger than what US is today at 19 trillion and then even an economy like Indonesia is going to be six seven trillion dollars so the prospects of the size of demand or market, the size of the rise of wealth. You know, Asians already love precious metals. Right. But can you imagine when the wealth levels are going to go up, the middle classes are going to grow up, yeah. the demand that's going to be generated in the region. This is exactly what we all are very bullish about in Singapore. We can be the London of Asia in supporting the entire physical flows and, and managing the entire risks in getting people to do business with one another. So sure. IE Singapore supported SBAV when the first idea, the first idea came to you. Right. So that's so, so I do want to take honestly yeah. this whole conference is supported by the fraternity, the industry. And I'd like to congratulate um, SBMA for 
coming together and they are they are key industry players individuals right. who believe in the vision that i've just described to you right. and they are really putting their their prowess their power their connection their networks behind this and i think this is a platform that has been energized and i hope to see it grow with the full support of the entire fraternity in the region thank you sir